anything that has mass and occupies space is called matter. John Delton proposed that matter is made up of small indivisible particles called atoms. But the researches done by various scientists like J.J. Thompson, Ernest Rutherford, Niels Bohr established that atom is not the smallest indivisible particle and is made up of still smaller particles called fundamental particles. There are three fundamental particles, electron, proton and neutron. Let's go through the events that led to the discovery of electron. William Crookes studied the conduction of electricity through gases at low pressure and high voltages in partially evacuated tubes called cathode ray discharge tubes or Crookes tubes and discovered cathode rays. J.J. Thompson discovered that the cathode ray consists of negatively charged particles called electrons. A discharge tube is a long glass tube containing two thin pieces of metal called electrodes sealed at its two ends. Cathode is negatively charged electrode and anode is positively charged electrode. The discharge tube is connected to a power source. The tube behind anode is coated with phosphorescent material like zinc sulfide. There is a side tube which can be connected to a vacuum pump so that experiments can be performed at low pressure. The electrical discharge through the gases takes place only when the pressure inside the tube is very low and potential difference between the electrodes is high. When a high voltage is applied between the electrodes, different results are observed at different pressures. At one atmospheric pressure, no current flows between the electrodes because gases are poor conductor of electricity. On decreasing the pressure with the help of vacuum pump to about 10 to the power minus 2 atmospheres, the gas becomes conducting and a colored glow is observed. When pressure is further reduced to about 10 to the power minus 4 atmospheres, you can see that the glow between the electrodes disappears but the gas continues to conduct the electricity. This flow of current from cathode to anode can be checked by using perforated anode. When these rays after passing through anode strike the zinc sulfide coating, a greenish glow is observed on the glass wall. These rays are called as cathode rays because they originate from cathode. Since cathode rays are produced in a discharge tube, the discharge tube is referred as cathode ray tube. Now let's discuss some of the properties of cathode rays. The cathode rays travel in straight line. When an object is placed in the path of cathode rays, a sharp shadow is produced on the glass wall. The cathode rays are made up of material particles. Cathode rays travel with a high speed almost equal to the speed of the light and possess kinetic energy. If a light paddle wheel is placed in the path of cathode rays, the wheel begins to rotate. The cathode rays produce heating effect. When cathode rays strike a metal foil, it becomes hot. The cathode rays carry negative charge. When an electric field is applied, the cathode rays are deflected towards the positive plate of the electric field. This shows that the charged particles in the cathode rays carry negative charge. Similarly, when a magnetic field is applied, the cathode rays are deflected towards the magnet. On reversing the position of magnet, 
we will see that the rays will be deflected in the opposite direction showing that the cathode rays carry negative charge. The cathode rays produce green fluorescence on the glass walls of the discharge tube. The cathode rays penetrate through thin sheets of metals. The cathode rays affect the photographic plates. The cathode rays produce X-rays when they strike against hard metals. After studying the various properties of cathode rays, it is clear that cathode rays are made up of material particles. Cathode rays carry negative charge. The negatively charged material particles constituting the cathode rays are called electrons. Electron was the first elementary particle that was discovered. The characteristics of electrons do not depend upon the material of electrodes and the nature of the gas present in the cathode ray tube. So we can conclude that electrons are the basic constituents of all the atoms.